Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and today I'm showing you how to make keto granola cereal. I don't know about you, but I grew up eating cereal and milk for breakfast. I'd grab a bowl of honey bunches of oats on Saturday mornings, after school, really any time of day. It's no wonder I had a blood sugar crash every afternoon. I have yet to come up with a low carb cereal replacement for the flakes, but a keto granola recipe, that's easy. We're going to make this granola with simple ingredients, no grains, and just 25 minutes from start to finish. It's sweet, it's crunchy, and it's perfect for snacking or over a big bowl of keto milk. I'll show you some options for the milk at the end of this video, and I'll show you a chocolate version as well, but the one we're making today is just plain vanilla, plain granola. You don't need any specialty flours to make this keto-friendly granola, but you do need Bestie Sweetener. This is my go-to sweetener for all my sweet recipes and it works great in granola. I used to make this recipe with erythritol or other sweeteners and you still can, but I find that it has a cooling aftertaste, it doesn't taste as good. Pick up a bag of this on my website or on Amazon and you'll see the difference for yourself. I'll link both down below. If you pick up a bag and need more recipes to make with it, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more sugar-free recipe videos. But for now, we're making low-carb granola. Let's do this. I'm going to start by lining a large baking sheet with parchment paper. If you don't have a large one like this, two small jelly roll pans will work as well. I'll link the size that I use down below. And now we're going to grab our food processor and we're going to pulse the nuts. I start with the harder nuts, so one cup of almonds and one cup of hazelnuts. You can use other nuts here if you like, but the harder nuts go in first because they take a little bit longer to cut into smaller pieces. And you want to get these to about a quarter to half the full size of the nuts. Now I'm going to add the softer nuts. I've added one cup of pecans here. You can also do walnuts, any softer nuts go in at this step. And just be sure that when you're pulsing, you're starting and stopping. Don't just puree, otherwise you're going to end up with a nut flour. And again, we're looking to get these into smaller pieces, about a quarter to half the size of the full pecans, but not super small. Now I'm going to add a third of a cup of pumpkin seeds and a third of a cup of sunflower seeds. If you don't have both of these, you can just do two thirds of a cup of one of them. And I'm adding six tablespoons of Bestie. This keto granola is now going to be super sweet, so feel free to add a few extra tablespoons if you want it sweeter, or a little bit less if you don't want it as sweet. And I've added half a cup of golden flaxseed meal. I find the golden one has a more neutral flavor, but brown flaxseed meal will work just as well. And this is going to help our granola stay together. Now I'm going to pulse this again. Be careful not to over process, otherwise you're just gonna end up with a meal and you really want those pieces in there for that crunch in your low carb granola. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add one large egg white. I like to separate the egg using the shells just like this directly over the food processor and you can save the yolk for something else. I'll link a couple recipes below that use egg yolks if you need some ideas. You might notice I got just a tiny bit of egg yolk in there. That's actually totally fine. With some egg recipes, you have to be really careful to make sure you get just the white. But if you get a drop of yolk here, don't worry about it. Now I'm going to melt a quarter cup of butter. You can also use coconut oil here or ghee. And then I'm adding a teaspoon of vanilla extract in there. I find that it mixes in better if you mix it with the butter before you add it to the food processor. So go ahead and add that in. And now we're going to pulse just a couple of times very briefly just to get everything coated. Again, be careful not to over process. And I'm gonna remove the blade now and I'm gonna use a spatula to mix this a little bit better. If this is difficult or frustrating in the food processor, you can also transfer it to a bowl. I just didn't wanna get another bowl dirty. At this point, the mixture is going to resemble a mixture of a coarse meal and nut pieces, all of it being a little damp from the egg white and butter. And we're going to transfer that to our large baking sheet and spread it out in a thin layer. Now this is the important part. You wanna press it into a thin rectangle about a quarter to a third of an inch thick, essentially as thin as you can get it. The thinner it is, the crunchier your keto granola is going to be. So go ahead and spread it out just like this. And you don't want any stray pieces on the pan because those have a tendency to burn. So you want it all in a rectangle just like this. And we're ready to bake. This is going to take about 15 to 18 minutes in the oven. You want it to get nice and golden brown, especially on the edges. 
If you don't bake it for long enough, then the granola tends to stay soft, so it's important to bake it until it's nice and golden. And then you want to let it cool completely before you break it apart because it's going to crisp up as it cools. Once it's cool, you can go ahead and break it apart with your hands just like this. It's up to you how big you want the pieces. If you're going to be snacking on it, you might like larger pieces. If you're going to be serving this like a cereal, then smaller pieces are the way to go. I usually go on the smaller side, but you do you. This is broken up to my liking now, so I'm gonna go ahead and store this. You can enjoy it right away as well, but I'll show you what I do. So I usually transfer this into glass jars right away and then serve it from the jars after that. This will store great in any airtight container. You don't have to use jars, but I'll link the jars I use down below because I think these are really convenient for so many kinds of kitchen storage. Once your keto granola is ready, you can store it in the glass jars for up to a few weeks. It lasts really well, it stays crunchy, and you can totally snack on this, but my favorite way to enjoy this is a big old bowl of cereal. Totally brings me back to my childhood. Let's talk about your milk options. So unsweetened almond and coconut milk are both very low in carbs, great for keto, great over low carb granola. But I find that on their own, both are a little bit watery, not my favorite, so here's what I do instead. I start with a little bit of almond milk, or actually mostly almond milk, and then I add just like a spoonful or two of heavy cream. Heavy cream on its own is gonna be way too rich, I think, for a granola. But if you mix it with the almond milk, it's perfect, just like regular dairy milk. And you can also mix this first, if you like, before you add the granola, if you don't want your granola to get too soggy. I kinda added my granola first. Let me add a little more fresh granola here. This is a pretty big bowl, but I'm hungry today, so this is what we're doing. And I like to add some fresh blueberries. Totally don't have to do this, but I think they are delicious on granola. You can also add raspberries or strawberries. All berries are low carb and keto friendly, so why not add those in? I am ready to try this. Okay, last thing. I said I would tell you how to make a chocolate keto granola. That recipe is in my Easy Keto Carboholics cookbook. I'll link down below where you can order that. But in the meantime, I hope you'll make this plain keto granola. I think you're really gonna love it. If you do, leave me a comment. I love hearing from you, love hearing what you think. And snap a photo, post it with hashtag wholesome yum so that I can see it too. See you next time on Wholesome Yum, where I share easy, healthy, and keto recipes, all with 10 ingredients or less.